to Kakati Shah, your host for the UMA Show. Welcome to your one-stop journey for feeling empowered. We're a platform for change. We build confidence. We are your voice. We want you to be bold, be you, be UMA. Today, we're exploring diversity in South Asian music. And I'm so excited to be joined by our goddess of go-getting, Ila Baliwal, who is a multi-award winning, classically trained Indian vocalist, songwriter and producer in New York City. Welcome, Ila. Thank you so much, Rita. I'm so happy to be on your show. Thank oh, you. it's so lovely to have you here, absolutely. So you're from Agra originally, the daughter of scholars with a passion for classical music. Tell us about your younger years and your upbringing. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm from Agra, the historic city of Taj Mahal. And both my parents were scholars, professors. My father was a nationally renowned uh, poet. And so my childhood was surrounded by poets, uh, musicians, and arts. Uh, my mother was uh, very passionate about music. She herself learned uh, singing and sitar and many other um, instruments. And uh, when I was born, uh, they made sure I had all kinds of teachers teaching me sitar, uh, you know, kathak dancing and singing. Mm -hmm. So it was filled with a lot of culture, a lot of poetry, a lot of music. So I, I'm very blessed that way that uh, my parents gave me that, uh, you know, solid uh, background. That's amazing. What an artistic upbringing. I love that. And you've always had a love of classical music and even wanted to pursue it professionally from a young age. However, what's interesting is that um, you mentioned that your, your mother, um, she was a great support and actually very forward thinking. She actually persuaded you against pursuing music full time, didn't she? And instead suggesting you get married. That must have been quite hard, especially for a gifted vocalist like yourself. Tell us about that experience. Um, yeah, so, you know, my mother was um, a trailblazer herself. Mm -hmm. She was the first woman to drive a car in Agra and people would stop on the roads because they would say a lady is driving the car. This was wow. 72, 73, she'll go to work. Uh, but, um, you know, she lost her husband, my father, uh, when she was very young, 42 or 44, something like that. And I think that, gave her living in a conservative town like Agra 40 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, um, she felt that it was, you know, it was tough for her to let her children go too far or explore somewhere. So I think she felt that if they are, if, if I'm married and if I have a good husband, I, I will still be able to pursue everything. But the, just the unknown of uh, letting your child go in this world, because she did, um, struggle with a lot of, um, you know, she never wore white clothing after my father passed away and people talked about it. So, you know, right. things like that, very conservative uh, town and um, time. So I think that's why she said, you know what, you, you can always, you have the base. If you have good partner, you can always do it even after you get married. So I think I didn't understand at that time, but now yeah. I understand her thinking and uh, why she wanted me to have a marriage first at that time yeah and it's amazing actually how the words of wisdom of your parents actually come back afterwards you didn't understand it at the time but then afterwards yeah. it's making sense you know and actually after you got married you moved to several countries around the world um the us china switzerland um to name just a few but you always did keep up your love for music Tell us about that. So actually you are fulfilling the dreams that your, your mom talked about, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you they say that you become your mother. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> um, so once I became mother, I literally, you know, find myself repeating what my mother used to repeat and used to not appreciate at that time. But in any way, like after I got married, uh, you know, due to my husband's job, uh, we chose to live in many, many countries and explore the world while our kids were younger and mm -hmm. took assignments which were challenging for him professionally. But so, so it wasn't easy, you know, we moved like uh, 13, 14 homes and every three years we were moving different culture. Wow. Different. And in China, we landed in 94 when it was just about mm -hmm. getting ready to become like what China is right now. So, so uh, but I think throughout all this move and chaos and, uh, 
you know, adventure. Uh, music was my uh, constant companion. Anytime yeah. I had changes or anything, you know, my husband was gone always um, fulfilling his career. So I was with the kids, young kids, you know, you have young children, <laughs> so they need full attention. So I would, mm -hmm. I would be taking care of them. But then music, I always will carve out a half an hour, one hour to be with my Tanpura, with wow. my soul, you know, just to practice because that gave me energy and that gave me, um, you know, uh, the, the positive vibration to, to keep moving on. So, and then in China, actually I, I sang for International uh, Women's Conference. They hosted wow. it, I think it was in 96 where Hillary Clinton was there, Jane Fonda were there. So, you know, I sang in front of them. So I, I tried to do a um, little bit of music every place I lived, Switzerland, China and everything while my kids were younger. I think that helped me um, keep going. In, in Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that because that is your soul. You just said it right, that is your soul. That's what drives you. And without your soul, how can you keep yeah. going? So you managed to find ways of just doing that. And I'm sure yeah. that was a really positive influence on your kids as well, especially at a young age, seeing you think, okay, mom has a passion. Look how she's yeah. finding ways of pursuing that. And you did that yeah. no matter where in the world you guys will travel together. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So speaking about your passion, you were under the instruction of gurus and pundits in India, um, practicing eight to 10 hours of music every day. Um, your music knew, knew no bounds um, and you actually performed to sold out audiences at Carnegie Hall in New York City, the Kennedy Center in Washington DC, as well as in Dubai, Los Angeles, Mumbai and Beijing. That is beyond amazing. Um, and then along along the way, you had a chance encounter with the leg legendary A.R. Rahman, um, which in effect opened up the next chapter in your life. Tell us about that. Yeah, so, you know, I was learning a lot and I practicing uh, hours and hours of music. And then, um, you know, I had this idea to, to bring that uh, ancient wisdom that we have in our culture mm -hmm. um, and the secularism in, in Indian uh, culture and philosophy and, you know, mythology. And uh, I happened to meet A.R. Rahman at an event and uh, we were just talking about music and I was telling him I've been learning for many, many years and I'm thinking to do this album uh, which would showcase all the festivals of India from different regions, you know, India is such a vast country. It's it's United Nations. We have different from east to west, south to north. We have different food choices, um, colors. You know, musical instruments are different. Um, the musical um, styles are different. So I said I wanted to bring them all together in one album, celebrate the secularism of India through festivals from different parts. So he got very excited, and these were his words. He said, "Oh." This is a great idea and it can be a national treasure if it's done right. Then he introduced me to his music producer, Ranjit Barot, and he said, uh, let's do a great job. Let's let's make it a big album. And um, that's how it all started. We did a lot wow. of brainstorming. And um, so, so the album Navratna, that's how it all came about. And it has nine songs on nine uh, festivals, including Christmas and Eid. And Eid actually... Wow. Yeah, Rahman has composed that song and um, it's beautiful with lyrics are lovely and, mm -hmm. um, you know, but they are all based on Indian ragas. So we kept the ragas intact, including Christmas is based on, uh, you know, Bihag. So uh, we kept it all intact, uh, but I wanted to bring that um, secularis secularism and uh, multicultural uh, approach of Indian philosophy and mythology and our culture so that's, that's amazing yeah. yeah thank you for sharing that and I've actually heard of some of the music it's absolutely breathtaking and I love the east meets yeah. west the pure yeah. the classical motion of it and the, the modernness and the fact you're bringing so many different traditions together because that isn't typically done you know everybody knows India is huge there's so many different parts of the culture and you're bringing yeah. it together with music and that's just beautiful um thank you so much for sharing about that thank journey you, and that you. encounter i mean talk about the expression you know being at the right place at the right time and that's exactly yeah. i guess what happened there isn't it yeah yeah i love yeah, that absolutely. yeah and it's been so successful that now you're actually starting to work 
on your second album, which in essence is about planet Earth. Um, it has an Indian soul um, with a global body. And that's one of the ways you described it. Tell us a bit about that. And you just recently launched that as well, haven't you? Yeah, so I recently launched the album. Uh, it's called Ila, the Earth Symphony. And Ila actually means the earth. You know, my name means earth. So um, I, I, you know, I grew up singing the songs of nature. You know, in Indian culture, we have a lot of uh, songs where you actually praise, you know, sun, sun as God or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, earth. you want to protect earth. So there are lots of festivals and things. So I grew up with those folk songs and all. And I, I had been thinking to do an album uh, dedicated to nature, mother nature, planet earth. And uh, so I started planning this a few years ago and um, when everything came together um, and I launched it on August 2nd, um, it, it's been wonderful. I wanted to do a um, lot of um, videos with it, but obviously COVID <laughs> changed, <laughs> things. changed everything. I was supposed to launch the album at Kennedy Center in August, but we couldn't do any of that and do a little bit of tours in New York and uh, LA. But uh, that could not happen. But then we produced um, a virtual concert, which I uh, just launched on, premiered on uh, September and end of September. And it's been highly successful. You know, people have appreciated. They've sent me amazing messages. So this is my uh, ode to Mother Nature. And uh, just like a shout out to all of us, basically, that yeah. we need to protect our nature. We need to consume less. We need to make sure that we leave this planet, uh, you know, in a better condition for our future generations. And, uh, you know, like, I think the COVID has also brought this uh, subject matter in a, uh, you know, front forefront, more yeah. in the climate change. And all. So, um, that's my album, Ila the Earth Symphony, my uh, musical tribute to Mother Earth. Yeah. yeah, and it's absolutely beautiful. Having watched it, and actually I've sent it to one of my family members as well, so everybody that I know to watch it as well. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. And there's some breathtaking Thanks. scenes that you've done. You know, you've, you've talked about, okay, you can't be in different places right now, but you've managed to put in video footage, different cultures, different people just um, supporting and really admiring planet earth and it's absolutely beautiful so i'd say to everybody just if you haven't already gone and seen it please do look it up it's absolutely thank amazing you, thank you. yeah <laughs> that's amazing so how do you get from having a passion for music to being successful i don't know if i'm successful but <laughs> I, I am passionate about music and i think you just have to keep going <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else is uh, as i told you throughout my life, no matter where I was, which condition, I music, I never left it. You know, I always yeah. kept doing it. And when I was bothered for something, something was not going right, I would just go to my music room, spend an hour mm -hmm. with my Tanpura and my Sur. And that gave me peace. It's my meditation. So yeah. I think you just have to keep doing it. You need to have resilience. You, yes. need, to, um, you need to really believe in yourself. Uh, and just just you know if you love and you do passionately something i think things fall in place you know you get the recognition whatever recognition you you mm -hmm. think you want or don't want and sometimes you don't you know so yeah. it, it's i think you just need to believe and keep doing it absolutely and that's so well said because you're right i think in any profession especially in the music industry resilience yeah passion and just remembering what you're doing and having that feeling come out and just going with it you know yeah. with you dedication as well you were there every single day practicing no matter where you were you would get your done for and you would just practice and I yeah. think like you said putting yourself out there too you know because yeah. that's how people start listening and recognizing that oh I, I like her voice or and then slowly you can start going and meeting people and then obviously your chance encounter as well with A.R. Rahman but it's little things like that you know you don't just um, you know, anyone could have met A. Rahman, but he picked you to do this album with because yeah. of your talents and because of your passion as well. And that's because of the hard work and resilience as well. So I love that messaging there. And I think it's important for everybody out there to kind of hear that, I guess. Um, yeah. That's so powerful. Um, you recently um, sang a beautiful rendition of Bande Mataram um, with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London. It was so 
beautiful that I would love um, if you could to actually just sort of sing a few lines now if you can. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hope um, you're not putting on the spot too much. <laughs> uh, okay, I could. I don't know how the Zoom sound will go, but I'll try. Vande Mataram Sujala Supala Malayaj Shetala Shasya Shamala Mataram Vande Mataram Vande Mataram Wow, that was breathtaking. And I thank you so much. I almost have tears in my eyes. It's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, absolutely. And that's without any sort of backup, no support, no, no music or anything. That was incredible. Thank you so, so very much. <laughs> so and um, before we let you go, um, what words of advice would you leave behind to any budding musicians out there who are looking to follow in your footsteps and fulfill their dreams? Oh gosh, I don't know if my footsteps are uh, worth following, but uh, since you asked, um, I think resilience is number one. You need mm -hmm. to have that. And also passion and believing in yourself is important. Uh, you need to learn from everybody, but try not to copy anybody. Try to find your own voice, own style, and own message. More mm -hmm. true you are to yourself, um, more you will resonate with the world. You know, So you are unique and try to preserve that uniqueness. And also work hard, but work also smarter. Um, you need to make sure that you can, if you are the sole earner or something and things are not working out, then you must learn to pivot and uh, think of other ways to support yourself. Don't be a starving musician. Uh, you know, that's important. But yeah. working passionately and believing in yourself and trying to find your own voice and resilience are my advice. You know, these are four points that I would. I uh, love that. Thank you so, so much, Ila, for sharing your incredible words of wisdom and your voice with us today as well. Ila, thank you so much for coming on. It was an absolute honor to have you. Thank you so much, Rita. Ila Baliwal, Indian vocalist, songwriter and producer in New York City. And thank you to our viewers for joining us on this empowerment journey. We want you all to embrace that inner goddess of go-getting. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma.